Director Robert Eggers' latest film, The Northman, is being described as the most accurate depiction of Viking culture ever rendered on film. It's very layered, it's very deep. Even the things out of focus in the back of the shop, they're all things that have been carefully worked on. Archaeologist Neil Price was one of three historical advisors on the film. He specialized in Viking objects, buildings, and religion. For a Viking specialist, it was very special to see this world that I've been researching for, for decades come to life in a form that you can pick up and hold. It was absolutely extraordinary. Let's examine each weapon in the Northmen with the help of the film's consultant. One of the key scenes, a raid on a Slavic village, a fortified settlement. Someone is throwing a spear. Amleth grabs it in midair and throws it straight back. That's actually an episode from the Icelandic sagas, this amazing body of medieval literature written down centuries after the Viking Age. In many ways throughout the film, Robert has very carefully drawn on that deep vein of storytelling that goes all the way back to the time of the Vikings. The spears are made with very straight shafts, usually of ash wood. The spear point is a metal, usually iron, obviously with a sharp point. Some of them for throwing, some of them for use in more close combat. They're also quite cheap. This is the basic weapon of the Viking Age. Everybody had a spear. The bow and arrow is also a quintessential Viking weapon. And there are so many different kinds of arrows. Special ones to go through armor, others to cause enormous bloody flesh wounds. This is really a, a very important Viking weapon. Another one of the main Viking weapons is the axe. Lots of different kinds. Short axes for close combat, you can throw them. Amleth makes innovative use of them here, using it to climb a wall. They have wooden shafts. The axe head itself is made of iron, very heavy, absolutely devastating in close combat. The primary defensive weapon is the shield. They're made of wood, often of lime wood, quite thin but flexible and strong, with a frame around the outside, often covered in leather. And in the center is this round iron boss. And what that is actually is the handle on the back side of the shield. If your shield has been hacked away in combat and all you're left with is that iron boss on your fist, you can use it to punch people with. So the shield in some circumstances is, a, is an offensive weapon as well. It's absolutely crucial to how the Vikings fought. Apart from the axe, there are two main kinds of bladed weapons. There's the classic Viking sword, either a single or a double-edged weapon used for slashing. But there's also a smaller, slimmer kind of blade, which is what you see Amleth using in the raid on the village. They're usually known as fighting knives or battle knives, and these can be used to stab, to slash, to hack, or to cut. They're nasty things. You can see that Amleth has the, the scabbard for this sword horizontally at his waist, and that seems to be how they were worn, at least to judge from how we find them in burials. The swords are made of iron, very, very carefully made, sometimes with edges of steel. They can be made with patterns in the blade. In the film is a special sword, and it's a sword with a name. And this idea of a named weapon is something that we find very often in the Icelandic sagas. A really illustrious warrior would have a sword with a name and a history. These are swords that are inherited or given as gifts or taken from fallen enemies, and everybody knew the story of these weapons. What you see here is silver arm rings with animal heads on the terminals, and the arm ring is a, is a very common item of jewellery in the Viking Age. Mainly for men, it seems to have been some kind of symbol of loyalty. There are images on carved stones of men waving rings in the air, and that's perhaps what these ones mean on Amla's arms here. Most of the film is taking place in the early 10th century, the 920s, 930s. The time that we call the Viking Age is from about 750 to around 1050. At the time of the movie, the Scandinavians have travelled over an enormous part of the world. The early 10th century, when this is going on, the Scandinavians are really well established on these rivers connecting the Baltic and the Black Sea. All of Scandinavia is essentially a maritime culture. There's, there's few places that are really far from the sea. It's the rivers that are kind of watery motorways that take those ships deep into the heart of the mainland to attack towns and villages, and then to get back up those rivers out to the open sea before anyone can stop them. 
avenge you, father. The boat that we see them rowing is a classic Viking longship, rather a small model, actually. The biggest could hold 120 men. They're shallow draft, easy to get into the rivers. So this is the machine that made the Viking Age possible. A lot of the settlements along the eastern rivers were defended in some way, either with a bank of earth or a palisade, a wall of some kind. Director Robert Eggers wanted to avoid romanticizing the Northmen. Instead, the film portrays Vikings, warts and all. Viking raids were very, very violent. It's important to see what this kind of raiding really was, how bad it was. This kind of scene, the attack on more or less defenseless settlements, looking for loot, looking for plunder, looking for slaves. This plays out all over Western Europe and all over the East. These Vikings do appalling things and they're shown to be appalling. This is a raid as it really was. One of the most important things to grasp about Viking Age Scandinavia is that this is a slave economy. Enslaved people, human beings, form an absolutely fundamental foundation to how Viking Age society runs. It's a nightmare. Kidnapping people, trafficking them, taking them back and using them as forced labor and worse. I'm particularly happy that the film has managed to convey is just how ubiquitous this was. Um, the enslaved are present all the way through this film, and that's an important thing to understand about the Vikings. I think it's been missing from our picture of them for far too long. In some scenes, they're, they're shackled with iron chains and, and links. These are direct copies of examples that come from archeological excavations. The film's attention to detail carries over into the depiction of the rich inner and spiritual life of Vikings. Something that recurs throughout the film is a special kind of ritual and magic, something resembling shamanism, actually. Your fate is set and you cannot escape it. I'm really happy with how it's depicted in the film. This was a, a central part of the way in which Viking Age people got in touch with the other world. And it's also clear that this was an arena, above all, of women's power. Women were the gatekeepers of the world of sorcery, the world of magic. This is a, a world that is absolutely teeming with spiritual life, a kind of invisible population. I have the cunning to break their minds. One of the things that, that in some ways sets apart the people of the Viking Age at this time is that unlike most of their neighbours, they are not Christians. They are still part of this very deep, ancient set of beliefs that goes back way earlier than the Vikings. Something that has really sort of set the internet alight from the trailer is the image of a Valkyrie. The word Valkyrie, Valkyria in, in Old Norse means chooser of the slain. Their job is to find the best warriors and to take them into the afterlife to serve in Odin and Freya's armies for the battle at the end of the world, the Ragnarok. I think often they tend to now be rather sort of stereotyped and especially sexualized. And it's something that Robert was very keen to avoid. And the Valkyries, as we see them here, are exactly as they should be. They are warlike, they're violent, and they are terrifying. With the Viking Age, you're going back a thousand years. There's a lot we don't know, so it's not possible for any historical advisor to give the filmmakers the same level of detail. Our image of the Viking Age is the end result of hundreds and hundreds of years of gradual distortion that started pretty much in the Viking Age itself and has continued ever since. And what I hope is that at least to some degree, this movie will, will kind of peel away all those centuries of distortion and show us perhaps a little bit of a glimpse of what the Viking Age was really like.